It is a pleasure to have everyone on board. I welcome LPW Radio and Zeno Radio from Bonnier in the Eastern Caribbean, Southern Eastern Caribbean. I welcome all those who are joining us from different parts of the world. We are pleased to have everyone on board. And as I have often said, this is a Bible class. We are here to learn. We are not here to argue with each other, but we are here to learn.
we've always said, keep your mics muted until you are to participate, ask a question or, or make a comment or whatever it is. But we want to welcome everybody, Zeno Radio and LBW Radio, operating from Bonnier in the Southern Eastern Caribbean. Welcome on board, everybody. This is your first time you are, we appreciate your presence here with South Edmonton Church of Christ in Canada, Wednesday night Bible class. We have been looking at the origin of religion, the origin of churches, how churches got started, where they got started, who started them, and how they have um, grown over the years. So we have covered a number of churches in the past couple of months. So let us see which church do we have on the screen tonight. Can we all see the screen now? Yes, we can. Okay, yeah. so we have the Baha'i. It's a strange church, strange name, how it is spelled. It is the Baha'i Fifth. So the Baha'i, it's called the Baha'i Fifth and the Baha'i Church. So you may see me using that in an interchangeable way, but basically it means the same thing um have we heard of that church before depending on where you are yes i have heard of that church yes we have yes okay so general consensus is that uh people have well it. i can't hear nothing um i think mary you need to lo log off and log back that might be your problem okay but i don't know what's the problem but i can't hear anything Okay, hey. just just log off your from Zoom and come back and log in back again. So we have to continue with the class. All right. <clears throat> so we will start with Sister Anissa Martin from Edmonton. Sister Anissa. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so, see, Seed, Ali, Muhammad, and the Baha'i Church. The Baha'i Faith was founded in Iran in 1844. Seed, Ali, Muhammad, at Shiite. Shiite. <laughs> Muslim proclaimed that he was the Bab, the gate, a special sort of interpreter of the Quran with special religious insight and prophetic abilities. He was the hidden Imam. The Bab's prophetic um, message spread in Iran, which angered both the government and the Shiite leadership. He was arrested and then executed. Right. Brief history of the founding days of the Baha'i religion, Baha'i faith. So, Said Mohammed was instrumental in laying the foundation. So, Mr. Mohammed was called the Bab because he was the gate, he was the person for whom um information was disseminated it was the person who had the spiritual insight and the as we know the imam is what we would call a preacher in a church or a rabbi in a jewish synagogue and you name it so he was like that and um he laid that foundation but he found himself being a shiite and Iran and these countries, they are run by two popular uh, type of Muslims. You are either Shiite or you are Sunni. So that created a problem with him and he was largely persecuted. He was persecuted and he was killed. Um, is that clear to everybody now? 
as to the foundation? Oh, yes. yes. Okay. And what gave rise to what we now have as the Baha'i faith? Okay. <coughs> Sister Janice in Ontario. Sister Janice. Good night, everyone. Good night. Uh, the Bahula and the spread of the Baha'i Church. One of the Bab's dis disciples, Mer Mizra Osin Ali Nuri, known as the Bahula, spread the Bab's teaching. These teachings eventually evolved into Baha'i faith, and in it, Bahula, Baha who is most typically known as the founder of Baha'i faith. In 1863, Bahula Baha declared himself a God declared himself as God's messenger. It is believed among Baha'i followers that the Baha'i Hula is God's messenger for this age and time. He follows the line of divine messengers stretching back to Abraham, Moses, Christ, Krishna, Buddha, and Muhammad. This teaching is false. Jesus is the final messenger, the Messiah. Hebrews 1, 1 to 2. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, as in these last days spoke to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Acts 3, 20-26 And that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive unto the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from you. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you, and it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God have raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Okay, thank you, my dear sister, for um, reading this long portion of scripture. But interesting information here for us to learn the history of the Baha'i Church. So we saw firstly that Said Mohammed laid the foundation. He was called the Bab. And then we have Mirza, or Mirza, how it is pronounced, known as Baha'u'llah. So you might hear speaking to a person from the Baha'i faith, you might be constantly hearing from that person, Baha'u'llah, Baha'u'llah, Baha'u'llah. So Baha'u'llah is that person who they believe is the final messenger. Just like you had messengers before him, Moses, Abraham, Krishna, uh, Buddha, and Muhammad of the Muslim faith, the thing that Baha'u'llah falls into that category. And I'm saying that doesn't make sense. Biblical sense I'm talking about. Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, based on Hebrews chapter 1, who is God's final messenger for this age? Jesus Christ. Jesus. Jesus Christ, not 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 Bahaula, okay, not Bahaula. And if you notice what Peter 
addressing the Sahindran Council, Peter said that for generations they looked for that prophet who, for that prophet who would be like Moses, as Moses promised. A prophet would, would arise, would be like him, and we need to listen to that prophet. And when Peter spoke in the first century, Peter said in Acts chapter 3, Jesus is that prophet. Jesus is that prophet, not Baha'u'llah, not the Bab who came hundreds of years after Jesus left this world and his mission was accomplished. So, Baha'u'llah spread the Baha'i Church and the Bab, Said, was the one who laid the foundation for the Baha'i Church. Please, Keep your mics muted because we need to have a good quality of broadcast. We have two people there who have their mics open. All right, so let us look at another thing. Brother Richard here in Edmonton. Brother Richard. The Baha'i Church Group, established by Baha'u'llah in 1863, it initially grew in Iran and parts of the Middle East, where it has faced and get ongoing persecution since its inception. Ba Baha'i has spread so to virtually every country in the world and Baha'i's temples can be found on every continent except America. Baha'i's faith, a world religion with members in 235 countries and continents and with 184 national spiritual assemblies. Currently, the Baha'i's faith has between five to six million members known as Baha'is spread, spread out into one second, it's getting very spread out into most of the world's continent. Sorry, it was getting blurry. Okay. I know you have in some people have problems because they are using their phones, they are using their laptops, they are using their tablets to um, log in there with us. So that is understood. We, we have limitations with technology and we have to live with it. But the Baha'i Church and growth um, started in Iran started in iran a lot of the churches we have been looking at uh where did they have their origin a lot of the churches we looked at previously europe europe a lot of them started in europe and where else america america a lot of them started in america europe. and now we have a church that had its origin in Iran. And we are seeing they are all over the globe except in Antarctica. All right? Except in Antarctica, where you do not have the Baha'i Church, but 235 countries and territories. So they have grown tremendously. And now they have about 6 million members and they are often called Baha'is. They are often called Baha'is. Okay. Sister Ingrid from Jamaica. Sister Ingrid from Jamaica. 
Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. The Baha'i faith in Canada. The Baha'i faith has been present in Canada since 1898. Canada has played an important role in the blend, in the spread of Baha'i Baha faith outside the Middle East. In 1937, a Canadian Baha'i, Mary Sutherland Maxwell of Montreal, married the great grandson of the founder of the Baha'i faith, Shoghi Effendi Rabani. From, from 1971 to 2011, 18,945 people of the Baha'i faith immigrated to Canada. As of 2015, there were an estimated 30,000 Baha'i in Canada, a number that includes French and English speaking members of the faith living in 1,200 communities. An estimated 18% of the Baha'i community in Canada are in Inuit of First Nations people, while recent immigrants make up 30%. Right. Thank you, Sister. Thank you, Sister um, Ingrid, for reading that info. You're welcome. In that information. So the Baha'i faith is not only in Iran, not only in America, not only in Canada, not only in the Caribbean, but we see how it spread. And for us who are living here in Canada, most people are not even aware that um, we have so many Baha'is in Canada. To those of us in Canada, did we know that um, that the Baha'i Church of Faith is that strong in Canada? No, not me, no. Some of you may not even have heard of the name Baha'i, right? But the Baha'i Church is strong in Canada. And they have made great strides. And especially with um, for the past five, 10 years with the recent situation in the Middle East with Syria and other places where people had to be displaced. Um, a lot of the people who came to Canada as immigrants, a lot of them are Baha'is. They are coming from that type of faith. So they have grown and they have spread their wings to the Mr. Grano, can I ask a question, yes. please? Mm -hmm. What are they teaching and preaching is um, like? Yeah, we are coming to that. So it's a good thing you're asking that, your curiosity. So we are coming to some of the things that they teach. I know that um, 1983, when I left Jamaica, when I left, in Jamaica. When I left my country, Dominica, to travel to Jamaica to study in 1983, um, the Baha'i Church had just moved to Dominica. They had just established themselves on the tiny island of Dominica in the early in the early 80s. Right. Let's look at that. Um, Cynthia Martin. Cynthia Martin. Good evening. Good evening. The Baha'i Church and the global community. The Baha'i faith do not have any clergy. All spiritual authorities held by local and national councils called spiritual assemblies. Baha'i Church is open to all who accept the teachings of Baha'u'llah. Baha the affairs of the community are governed by democratically elected councils locally, nationally, and internationally. The supreme governing body, univer the Universal House of Justice, has its headquarters on Mount Carmel, Haifa, 
Israel and is elected every five years to manage the faith. The Baha'i faith is represented at the United Nations in New York and at the European Union in Brussels. All right, thank you, my dear sister. Um, with what was read, what do we notice here about the Baha'i, about the Baha'i faith? What was just it's, read? It's a strong political group. Okay, they influence the politics of the group. group. All right. Um, very strong politic, very strong group. Democratically elected council. Okay, they have a democratic system of, of church government. Their headquarters in Israel. The headquarters is in Israel. Yeah. Right? So yeah. as much as we may not have heard of Baha'i, do not know much of Baha'i, as Sister Hazel was asking, what do they believe? What do they teach? But it's a well-established group. It's a well-established church that has spread its wings. And you, if you notice, they are in places of influence. They have a presence at the European Union in, in Brussels that represents a number of countries in Europe. And they are located and may have an office at the United Nations in New York. So while they start in Iran and they are spread, they have place, I would say, themselves in strategic positions in the world. Okay, we go down to Sister Avlin. Sister Avlin here in Edmonton. The Baha'i the Baha Church, the Baha'i Church's sacred writings. The writings of the Bab and Baha'u'llah are considered divinely inspired teachings and are at the heart of the Baha'i faith. These teachings, according to the Baha'i Church, were divinely revealed to the Bab and the Baha'u'llah. The writings of Baha'u'llah have been translated into more than 80 languages. Some are direct statements on morality and ethics. Others are mystical and poetic works. Some are in letters to individuals. These writings are considered sacred by Baha'is and are used as their scripture or Bible and guide. This teaching is false. All the scripture we need, all the scriptures we need are in the Bible, Genesis to Revelation. God did not use Baha'u'llah to, to reveal. reveal these scriptures. John chapter 5, verse 39. You search the scriptures for in them, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. Second Peter 1, verse 20 to 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God speak as so holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sister Hazel was asking, what do they believe? What do they teach? Sister Hazel, they believe that they have their own sacred scriptures. Just like we saw when we were looking at the, the um, Mormon church, when we were looking at the Jehovah Witness faith, they have their own translation. So the Baha'i church, they believe the writings, they believe the writings of the Bab and Baha'u'llah are inspired. So that is what they go by. 
They do not go by what is in the Holy Scriptures as you would read from Genesis to Revelation. But I'm saying that this concept is false. Because when Jesus said to us, search the Scriptures, because the Scriptures is what testify of him, he wasn't referring to the writings of the Bab and the writings of Baha'u'llah. And when Peter says to us that holy men of God were moved to write the scriptures, Baha'u'llah and the Bab, they were not born. They were not born. So that concept that, 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 that this writing is what you have to go by, and that this is what controls your mind, controls your faith. It's contrary to what is in the scriptures. Is that clear to everybody? Yes. Oh, yeah. Brother okay. Roy. Yes. Um, if you notice all these churches and denominations that we um we study so far. They all come after the death of Christ. Mm -hmm. And they think that they are so holy. It's like, um, what are they thinking? Like, you come after Christ. So there must be something before you. And you can't be the one because you, you were not crucified and all that stuff. And then because we people are so brainwashed, they don't like think logical. And that is what normally happens. Um... Sometimes common sense is thrown out of the window and people accept uh, things that are not rational and maybe reasonable, but that is how religion works. All right. Let us look at this one. Let us look at this one here. Brother, Brother Damien. Brother Damien. Oh, I think Damien, you yeah, might be muted. Like, okay. Um, the Baha'i Church and fasting. Baha'i are expected to fast for 19 days a year and participate in the 19 day feast. This teaching is false. God never stipulated a period or number of days to fast fasting and the length of days were determined by each individual um, circumstances events or as instructed by a national fast esther 4 15 to 6 then esther told them to reply to mordecai go gather all the jews who are present in shushan and fast for me neither eat nor drink for three days, night, or day. My maids and I will fast likewise, and so I will go to the king, which is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Matthew 4, 1 to 2. Then Jesus was led up to the, by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Afterward, he was hungry. Acts 27, 33, 34. And as day was about to dawn, Paul implored them all to take food, saying, Today is the 14th day. You have waited and continued without food and eaten nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take nourishment, for this is for your survival, since not a hair will fall from your head at any, of any of you. Hey, thank you, Brother Damien. All right, so the Baha'i, the Baha'i Church, Sister Hazel again, not only do they think that they have their own writings called scripture, but they have instituted a fast and put a number to it. Right, they have put a number to it. What do we notice in the scripture in the Bible about fasting? It was done different times for different people. 
It was done different times. You'll notice in the one with Esther, when Moses, first of all, when Moses went up to the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments, how many days he fasted? How many days he was up there without food? It was the same 40 days. Was 40 it 40 days? 40 days. Right. Let us, let us be aware as to what is in the scriptures. And we have Esther's situation. How many days the people are, were commanded to fast? Three, Three days. Three, Three days. days. And we have when Paul journeyed to Rome to face trial, they encountered a stomach sea. And how many days they were without food? 14 days. 14 days. So as we can see in scripture, it varies. There is no um, standard time. Fasting has always been left to an individual. Or if there is a national fast like Esther's situation, it's called. So they put in fasting. Mm -hmm with a specific time and uh, length of time is contrary to what is in the bible so that is one of those things that uh, yes is there somebody with a question okay if not let us uh, yes, brother Roy. I, I forgot another thing that I noticed with these um denominations also and these um um groups, most of them uh you have to say are aligned with politics. Mm -hmm. And if we if we uh, go back to the origin of the Church of Christ, it's not aligned with anything with politics. So there you can see where they are, where you can recognize the false teaching with them. Because if you're professing Christ, why are you aligning yourself with these politicians? You want to be on these board of directors and all that and all that to to gain self recognition and popularity and all that stuff. Yeah, these things do happen, and uh, in in the world of religion, but the church is to be different. The church is here to present the message of christ to the world let the politicians deal with with their politics right the baha'i church and uni unification uh we go to sister um jewel it's the jewel there in the u.s it's the jewel hi good night night can you scroll up a little bit um yeah oh scroll down a little bit now <laughs> yeah okay the baha'i church unification of the races baha'is believe that mankind is one human race and that the age for the unification of the race into a global society has arrived baha'is believe in the unity of humanity and the unity of all religions the ultimate goal is to create a unified human humanity without racial, ethnic, class, or religious prejudice. The unification of the races and world governments is the hope and the objective of the Baha'i men of all the earth. This teaching is false. The unity of all men and races in the, the unity of all men and races in the church. Is. Or oh, is in the church. Yes. Uh, <laughs> This world is temporary. Is a temporary dwelling place. Our hope and our citizenship is in heaven. Galatians three twenty eight. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Ephesians two fourteen says, For he himself is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation. In Philippians. 320 it says for our citizenship is in heaven for which we are eagerly we for which we also eagerly await for the savior lord jesus christ all right thank you my sister so where is our citizenship 
located? In heaven. In heaven. 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 That is where we hope to go. That is where we hope to be with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Angels. That is our, our ultimate hope and goal. So when they are trying to unite people together on earth, that's not going to happen. Because that is not God's goal and God's ultimate objective. When Paul wrote in Romans and Ephesians, he made it very clear that the unity that God wants is not in the world. But where should the unity happen? In the church. In the church. In the church. And that is very clear in Ephesians. In the church. One Christ came and he made peace. But peace between what? Jew and Gentile. That those who were separated for years, Christ came and he bridged that gap. And he broke down the middle wall of partition. And thus he created peace between the two factions, Jews and Gentiles. So in the church, we are a global community in the church. We are coming from different parts of the world, but we are united as one in Christ. A lot of congregations leave that reality and that experience in edmonton where we are when you look on a sunday morning when all of i would say all of most of us are present on a sunday morning we have almost about 20 different nationalities in the congregation because the way that christ looks at the church is that he wants everybody from different paths, from different backgrounds, from different races to come together in Christ through obedience to the gospel and learn to coexist as one people. God is not looking for bringing all religions and all races of people to be one. That has never been God's intention. So for the Baha'i to have that intention, that intention is contrary to what is in the scriptures. Is that clear to us? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So we go now to Carol Banks in the Cayman Islands in the in the Caribbean. Carol Banks. Yes, sir. Yes. Can you go up a little bit? The Baha'i Church and Progressive Revelation. Baha'i is believe. Baha'is believe in progressive re revelation. God is still revealing Himself in different ways to different people at different times. This teaching is false. Biblical truth is not progressive. All the truth we need to know. One minute, brother Roy. Am I something went wrong with my Evelyn? How do I get this? Sorry about that. Something happened to my iPad. Okay, it's technology, my sister. We okay, will, let's start we'll over again. With you. Baha'is believe in progressive revelation. God is still revealing himself in different ways to different people at different times. This teaching is false. Biblical truth is not progressive. All the tr truth we need to know has been given to us and revealed to the apostles and writers of the New Testament. John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. John 16, 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, 
he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Jude 1, 3. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for, for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. Second Peter 1, 3. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Yeah, I don't think we have anything after that. So um, let us look at, at that briefly. The Baha'i faith and progressive revelation. Progressive revelation in the, is a teaching, a doctrine that a lot of churches embrace. The Mormon Church, the Jehovah Witness Church, some Pentecostal churches, they embrace that teaching that God is constantly revealing new truth. So that is why the Baha'i, they believe that Baha'u'llah, truth was revealed to Baha'u'llah. The Baha'u'llah, Baha who laid the foundation, said that he was the gateway through whom people could communicate with the creator. So when people start to accept these things, then it opens the door to other things. So when you think that, so God, as the Baha'i faith puts it, God spoke to Abraham, God spoke to Moses, God spoke to Jesus, God spoke to Muhammad, God spoke to this person and that person, and God spoke to Baha'u'llah. Oh, my Lord. When you open your mind to that, then somebody is going to come after Baha'u'llah. Somebody is going to come after that somebody, that somebody, and that somebody. And it's not going to end. So at what point do we stop it? At what point do we say God has revealed all things that we need to know? And if we notice the scriptures, brethren, in John chapter 14, when Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit, he says the Holy Spirit will teach you not some things, but all things. Will bring to your remembrance all things. And John chapter 16 verse 13 says to us that the Spirit will guide you into all truth. So when the Spirit came, whatever truth that needed to be revealed, the Spirit revealed it. Hence, the Spirit is not going to reveal another set of truth. So that is why Jude said to us, we need to contend for that faith, for a truth that was once and for all delivered. It is not progressive. It is not happening in stages and at different times. And Peter says to us that God has given to us all things that pertain into life and to godliness. The things we need to, for life, the things we need for godly living, they are presented to us in the scriptures. So that concept of progressive revelation is a false concept. And the Baha'i faith has accepted that concept. I remember in the early 80s when the Baha'i faith came to Dominica as a young boy, um, one of our church member, he left the church and he joined the Baha'i faith. And soon he was talking about everywhere you hear him, it's Baha'u'llah, Baha'u'llah. Jesus, Jesus was no longer in his mouth. It was Baha'u'llah, Baha'u'llah, Baha'u'llah. And I remember in 1987, when I came back to Dominica, I had a talk with him and I was pointing him to John chapter 16. And I said, if the Holy Spirit had revealed all truth to the apostles how is it that 
some truth was revealed to Bahá'u'lláh. And his explanation was that the Holy Spirit did not reveal all truth. That some truth that were left, that truth was revealed to Bahá'u'lláh. Brethren, when we embrace false teaching, one false teaching leads to another false teaching to cover up that false teaching. So we have to be very careful when we open our minds to those false religion. But I'm thankful that, that God worked with him and he is back in the church. He has left the Baha'i faith. Amen. And Amen. He's back in the church. Amen. But brethren, Amen. There are false religions on the outside. And people who do not know the truth will likely give in to those false religions. As I was preaching on Sunday, Luke said to Theophilus, the things that you have been taught, they are indeed the truth. Hold on to it. Don't let go. And that is the same appeal I'm making to all of us on this platform. We have been taught the truth. There is nothing called progressive revelation. Let us not give in to these type of things. So I want to thank everybody for participating in the class and for learning another religion, the whole concept of the Baha'i faith, how they came about and some of the things that they believe and they teach. We look forward to next week, Wednesday, where we shall do an re a review. And I'm asking everybody, let us come back. Let us do the review and see what you can remember about the churches that we have looked at in the last three weeks. I want to invite. Uh, Brother Damian Martin to lead us in a prayer, and then we will have some quick announcements. All right, let us pray. Almighty God, we are so thankful, Father, that you saw it fit to hold this world together that you saw it fit there, Father, to send your only begotten Son into this world, that we can have life and have it in abundance. We are appreciative, dear God, that you allow the Holy Spirit to dwell within us, those of us who have put on Christ in baptism, that we can be directed by the Holy Spirit, that we can be convicted by the Holy Spirit. And we pray, Almighty God, that as we have studied your word, and as we have looked at the comparison between those that are outside of the church versus what you have built through your son, Jesus Christ, we pray, dear Father, that we will hold fast to what we have been taught, that we will only go where the word of God has directed us, and that we will not go beyond what is written. We thank you, dear Father, for your love, for your mercy, and for your grace, that you have granted us another day, that you've granted us another time that we can gather together here on this platform to look into your word. And we pray, Almighty God, that you bless each and every one that's on this platform at this time, that we will continue to open our hearts to understand what your word has to say to us, and that we imply it or implement it in our lives. We pray at this time for Linda Ross and her family as they mourn the loss of, of Peter. We pray, Almighty God, that you'll comfort them like no other can. And we know that you are the God of comfort. And we pray to God that you'll be with them, that you'll strengthen them, that you'll grant them the peace that they need at this time. Pray to Father that you'll help each one of us as we leave from this platform, but not from your presence, that we will take your word with us, that we'll take the Lord Jesus with us wherever we go as we go to navigate the rest of this week. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Right. Just, so just stay with us here for two Amen. minutes. Amen. Two minutes um, to take care of some notices. Quickly, as you heard, Brother Damien making mention that uh, Peter Ross, we have been praying for, passed away. 
and the funeral service is set for uh, the 2nd of March, 1 p.m. at the Northside Church of Christ. We appreciate LBW Radio and Zeno Radio, where Brother um, Dexter Honore was able to carry this Bible class live to different parts. And um, to our men, on Thursday, we have prayer meeting on Zoom. So those of us on the outside who can join us, you are free to do so. 7 p.m., same time as this Bible class on our Zoom. All right. Um, Brother Laza, I will be speaking, interviewing Brother La Laza. Brother Laza works on the island of Curacao. So those who want to those who want to know more about the church in Curacao, uh, join us Saturday morning, 7.30 Edmonton time. All right. And um, we appreciate all those who are joining us for the first time. If you are there for the first time, we appreciate you taking the time. Earlier we had um, brother from Cameroon, a brother from Cameroon who joined us tonight by the name of Brother Ivo. Brother Ivo, are you still there? I'm dead, brother. Okay, can you just briefly tell us a few things about yourself and where you worship in Cameroon? Good morning, everyone. I'm so blessed, I'm honored to be in this particular platform. I've benefited a lot. I worship with the uh, Bokoko Church of Christ as a graduate from the School of Biblical Studies affiliated to Sunset International. So I do a voluntary service with a well Bible school like uh, the, the study helper so that the truth should reach people. So I'm commonly known as the 